my name is Nora Sveos, and I will introduce myself in a moment. But first, I want to express how happy we are to be able to enter into contact with you, and we're looking very much forward to having this time together both today and the subsequent weeks. We know that you are all actively engaged and involved in very important work regarding psychosocial work with health issues and conflict problems in a situation which is extremely stressful and difficult. So we want to share with you during these sessions a very short version of the training manual that we have developed over time. I will explain a little bit more in detail about the manual, but it is based on ideas and experiences developed by Norwegian psychologists and psychiatrists who have all been involved in gender-based violence assistance in situations of war and conflict. So what we present to you are no answers or something which is cut in stone, but we want to share with you some of our own engagement and experiences and some of the ways to work with persons who have been extremely exposed to violence, how you can meet them and work with them based on some of the ideas that we will share and discuss with you. We know that you, um, we know that you have access to the uh, manual itself, that you may look at it on the internet or perhaps even on paper. So hopefully you will be able to read and study it in between these meetings. And then we will have the opportunity to discuss uh, a little bit every time to, to share and discuss ideas. And as we have suggested to you, it's very good that you are working in pairs, that you are two and two together, and I hope that this, that this is actually taking place. Because many of the issues that we will raise are in, interesting and important to, work, to discuss and talk about with your colleagues sitting together with you. So I will want to, again, extend a warm welcome to all of you. I do hope that the technical part is functioning. We have been quite nervous. We can, we can uh, absolutely say that. And we do hope that we are able to be in touch today and the following weeks. Next, the next slide, please. Thank you. Yeah, the next slide. So we want to say some words about the organization that we are, Health and Human Rights Info, that's behind the development of the manual. We have wanted, by doing this, to make information about mental health more accessible to personnel working with people exposed to human rights violations. This is the web page that you also have access to where you can find different kinds of material that we hope can also be of inspiration and use for you in your daily work. Through our web page, we hope to provide with relevant and comprehensive information of practical use and that you can find support in situations where more specialized services within mental health care are not available and the need to provide care is of essence. So we also saw the need in our work to develop something more specific with regard to mental health of survivors of trauma, especially trauma associated with gender-based violence. So again, this is, on this background, we developed the manual of which we shall give you a very brief insight. Thank you. The next. We have been putting together some information 
as preparation for this first session that we're having today. As you see, these are links and information that you can look at afterwards because you all have access also to, to these and look into literature that may be of importance and interest to you. The next. We want to start this course by showing you a brief film called Mama Congo, which describes the situation for women in Congo and also some of the resilience and survivor ability that they show through this film. And again, this will be a technical challenge and we hope for the best. So you can open the film, please. I hope you had a chance to see, to see this video. And we have chosen to, to show it to you because it shows resilience and strength even in situations of despair and very problematic situations. We have shown this uh, little video because we think that it conveys both resilience and strength even in situations of difficulties and despair. And despite the fact that the situation is probably quite different from the one that you're working with, it's something to see how survival and how survival can, can take place even in serious conflict. We will now move to the next slide and I will give you a very brief introduction about this course. We do hope, of course, that we will be able to solve all the technical challenges every time that we will meet. And we are basing ourselves on these modern equipment and hope that they are on our side. The core structure that we have developed in collaboration with Hamza, and we are very grateful of his enormous initiative, and again, we will present ourselves in a moment. Uh, um, this course will, will lead to a certificate. It's a certificate course involving approximately 30 hours of reading, discussion, webinars, as we now have, and different questions. And we will be working together over a seven-week period. The course is based on a participatory, active learning approach with an emphasis on critical reflection and peer-to-peer -peer learning. We say this because we know that you all have methods, tools, and experience that you can share with each other, and we would like also to enter into these conversations. But at this point, we encourage you very strongly to talk to each other sitting those of you who are sitting together with your peer and discuss how you can approach persons, individuals in these situations. The participants in the course will do the required readings, prepare interim and assignments, and participate in group discussions. The whole seminar will take place also based on a metaphor that will be used to enable interactive learning and activities. We will explain what we mean by this metaphor. And as, and as you will see, there are butterflies spread around all the course, but we will come back to the butterfly. The next slide, please. So now we want to introduce the trainers and you have heard there's a microphone on now. Um, I want to introduce the three of us, which is, I would say, first of all, Hamza Hanvi. Do you want to introduce yourself at this point, Hamza, or do you want me to say some words about you? Yes, please go ahead, but there is a mic at open. I, I know there's, there's a mic. Okay. So, again, thank you very much, Hamza. Hamza Hanvi has been involved with humanitarian operations over 10 years. He has designed and delivered numerous training programs 
and facilitated workshops for a range of humanitarian and development organizations, including Syrian Arab Red Crescent and SNGOs, INGOs, DRC, GRS, and local communities. And I want to emphasize that Hamza is from Syria himself. He has experience in designing and managing the right space project, leading the field teams in development and humanitarian response, conductive surveys, advocacy training, need, need assessment, and continues to work in the field and train humanitarian workers. He will also, in a short moment, speak about the sphere principles in which he is also trained. So then I was happy to introduce Hamsi, Hamsa Hanwi to all of you, himself from Syria, trained and certified sphere trainer, and he will talk a little bit more about the humanitarian principles of sphere as well. So then we have Elisabeth Langdahl, who you see on the right on your screen. Elizabeth is the Executive Director of Health and Human Rights Info. She has a Master's Degree in Human Geography and a Bachelor in Media Studies from Oslo University. In addition to run the Health and Human Rights Info Resource Database on the consequences of human rights violations on mental health, she has for the last six years been working with the priority area of gender-based violence. And then the third person here to the left, that's myself. I'm called Nora. My last name is a bit complicated outside of Norway. I myself am a clinical psychologist and I work at the University of Oslo, Department of Psychology, as associate professor. I've been working with refugees to Norway for, for 40 years as a psychologist. I've been particularly uh, working and concentrating on individuals and families exposed to torture, and I've also worked strongly with women who have been exposed to sexual violence and conflict. I, I am the chair of the Health and Human Rights Info, and I used to be, for eight years, a member of the UN Committee Against Torture, and I'm presently a member of the UN Subcommittee for the Prevention of Torture. I have worked for many years, as I mentioned, with the refugees coming to, to Norway, but also had the chance to collaborate with colleagues in different parts of the world. Maybe parts of what I said that you have missed out on, but um, we, have, we hope that we have introduced the main trainers. You will meet others of our colleagues during this process, but today it's the three of us that you will meet. Now I would like all of you to spend some minutes to talk about the questions that we have included between yourself so that we can have an idea about uh, so you can have an idea about your own experiences and discuss it with your colleagues. So if you see on the page, there are some questions about motives and ambitions, expectations of the training, and you have also been asked to, to fill out the form before we started today. We would, some challenges and problems existing in your community that you specially want to focus on and also about human rights violations and how that has affected people you're working with. We do not have to do all of them because there are many, but if you can start just to speak together about expectations and specific problems that you would like to, to focus on in this training, that would be very helpful. So I will give minutes to you to, to think about this and take some notes. And um, we will come back later on with, um, with some of the, your input. Hello again. At this point, we hope that you have been able to speak to your league sitting together with you. And that you may have, and in case you are alone, if you have taken note or looked into some of the issues that you particularly want to to go into and what you expect to take out of this, this training, which will be 
over these seven weeks. So I would very much encourage and I would be also very curious to listen to some of your perspectives on this, especially given that you are very much engaged in this work on the ground. So now, if we can have one microphone at the time to, to comment or to or either to ask each other questions. أنا رشا أنا بشتغل مع الـ IDC International Book Reason شغلي بيعتمد أكثر شيء على تحويل الحالات النفسية Okay, I'm Rasha and okay. I'm working with IDC uh, with IDC International Book Reason uh, Before uh, my uh, cure of my working is referring mental health cases from our doctors in our center to yeah. Mm -hmm. So you you're receiving people at your center. I lost her again. I she started explaining about her center. If people want to to raise questions or or make comments in the chat box, uh, they may of course be fully encouraged to do that. So. As, as I said in, uh, in my intro, words of introduction, uh, as we see it, we, have, we try to convey ideas and practices and some, some, uh, some methods that could be of use in your work and probably fit into what we're already doing. That's why we always want us to discuss expectations and, and the practices, but we know that um, this was a bit difficult at this point, so I may want just to, to go on, but that we have in mind um, the possibility of speaking more when we have the techni technical part on our side. So the next slide, please. We want to s just to introduce a little bit more about the manual, and we raise the question, why this manual? The reason, first of all, is that we know that there is a severe and a high number of human rights violations throughout the world, specifically with regard to gender-based violence, both against women and against men. The violence happens a lot, unfortunately, and there are also strong international efforts to combat gender -based in order to reduce this. And these initiatives in order to prevent these, these things from happening, but we need to know that the survivors are being met and that they're being supported and that the family also are helped. So our question is how do we have more people engaged in assisting women and men and children exposed to sexual violence. This manual will mostly turn to work with women, but the way experiences very well included in the male male patients and and we might also open any that gender based violation interpretation of survivors must take into account the broader humanitarian guidance and we have included some information about this to to look into the helper and some of the training that you will be having over these sessions will focus on you as the helper. How can you help? How can you develop your skills even further? And also, what assistance do you need to be able to start as a helper in a very stressful situation? I'm sure this is something that you have 
been discussing among yourself for many, for many months and years. Next slide, please. The next slide, please. Thank you. We often talk about added value. How can the manual become an added value for the trainer? We hope that new skills for helping the survivors can be communicated. We lay very much focus on empowerment by knowing and understanding and finding ways to deal with traumatic memory when they appear. We know that trauma has a very strong effect on the mind of everyone who is affected and one of the consequences that the trauma is impossible to get out body out of your mind. We know that when thinking and talking about these events, it's important to find ways of helping the survivor to be as calm and present as possible. And we call these exercises grounding exercises. We will, of course, explain these in detail. We think that working with these aspects has an added value also for the community. We hope that also strong survivors participating actively in local community, taking part in decision-making processes with their knowledge and experience is very, very important in this work. This means that also those who have surviving background, as the women we saw in Mama Congo, are able to community. I'm sure that many of you have worked with survivors who themselves are providing assistance to others. The ba basic value that we put to all this is the human rights perspective. We think that awareness about the human rights may assist both in understanding the suffering and in finding ways to respond to it in a respectful and helpful way. I think human rights perspective is important for the helper. Because the helper sees and knows that he or she is working to strengthen the human rights of the people that we're working with. This may give us some, some direction and some strength. But also communicating about human rights to those who are affected may also have a valuable side. To understand what not only as something that has happened to me or to my family, but it is actually forbidden acts. It is acts that are worked against internationally as part of the international human rights work. And as I sometimes say to my clients who have been exposed to very serious abuse of different kind, that these events are also seen as war crimes, and there is accountability, or there should be accountability for such crimes. That is, it's not only something that happens to me, it is something that happens to many people. The world is aware, and the world is working with this in terms or in a context of human rights strengthening. So we think that human rights perspective is the foundation for all this work. Next slide. What characterizes this manual? I think, first of all, we call it low-intensity training. By this, we mean this is not training for, for, for experts or people working in a specialized health care. Even if you are an expert or a specialist yourself, you're working on the ground, you're working close to where things are happening, and it may be of importance to have low-intensity intervention. That is not therapeutic intervention, but assistance, providing support and guidance to the person, including teaching him or her skills, survival skills, so to speak. The manual has a strong focus on mental health and psychological reactions to traumatic events. 
we know that internationally people may have different kinds of reactions to different forms of trauma. But even if that is so, there is a lot of similar reactions and these seem to be across borders and across nations. And the group who have been developing these guidelines or this manual have themselves worked in different settings and do experience, have experienced that people after trauma may be affected in very much the same way. How the memory is affected, how the feelings are affected, how the ability to concentrate is affected, all these strong reactions that people may have following trauma. Then we hope that through this manual, you will find practical interventions, exercises, and skills training. Oftentimes, we meet with helpers who need some support and assistance in finding good ways of meeting the survivor. That is, ways of dealing with the reactions that the survivor has. We hope that some of the examples that we will discuss in this manual can provide you exactly with this kind of support. We are resource oriented or the manual is resource oriented and we want to underline the resources and the strengths of the survivor as well as the helper. This means that we don't see survivors or persons exposed to trauma as patients or somebody that do not have do not have a saying in their own lives. On the contrary, a trauma takes away a lot from a person and all the work that we have to do is to strengthen resilience and to strengthen their resistance and their own capacity to deal with the problems. So we do hope that we have a very strong resource-oriented um, perspective, which means that we are afraid of using the term victim, uh, even though in many places it's perfectly okay to talk about victims, but it also may communicate a sense that persons are victims and not even or not anymore uh, able to deal with their own lives. So we speak about survivors even though victims, of course, is used in many settings. We want to build on experience and local knowledge. We want to take as a starting point your own, ex your own ex experiences, your own strategies, and discuss how this can fit in with what we are communicating to you. It's nothing to be adopted or implemented uncritically, not in any way, but some of the exercises such as grounding, breathing, a lot of these basic communication skills that we are trying to communicate to you may very well be part of the repertoire that you already have. We think that this manual leaves a lot of room for adaptation and adjustment in each context. Of course, you know your context, you know what is possible, you know what is absolutely impossible, and that is the important, important part. See what can be used and what cannot be used, which is very much so for the, for the metaphor, the sub butterfly metaphor that we will present to you later on. We know that in some situations, this is a metaphor that can easily be adopted and taken into the practice of helpers, Whereas other places, not so easy. This is up to you to decide and think about. We hope that the manual can be trustworthy. We can say and we can reassure you that it has been developed by clinicians who have, who have a background for doing this. But we do hope that now when it's made, it can be used also by non-clinicians, that the training within the manual gives the tool uh, to be able to perform some of these interventions, even without being trained clinician oneself. Also, we hope that by working on the manual, you can also be able to communicate with your collaborators in your clinic and be a trainer or of assistance to the others, also by using parts of the manual. 
we hope it is being self-explanatory. That is, if you will look through the manual, you will see how many of the interventions are explained on the other side. In a moment, we will uh, give you some examples of this. And we hope that it functions as self-explanatory. Supplements existing, guidelines, and manuals. As I mentioned, there are a lot of work out there to deal with gender-based violence and, and, um, and torture and violence in conflict. We hope that this mental health perspective and a very concrete intervention can support and can add to the many guidelines that exist because it focuses especially on health and mental health. Yes, and as I said already, it's based on clinically informed and human rights-based approach. approach. So, the next page, please. As I have already mentioned, and now we will talk a little bit more about the human rights perspective, and we will also talk about the fair principles, the humanitarian principles, and Hamsi will share some of his knowledge about this with us as well. But we think that a human rights-based approach is empowering people to know and explain their rights and increase their ability to do so, and also increase the possibility of accountability of individuals and institutions that are responsible for, for human rights. So what we need to be aware of is the importance of human rights in this area, how we can understand the violations in a human rights perspective, and also teach people that they have rights. They are equal in dignity and in worth, and they have rights. This means giving people greater opportunities to participate in shaping decisions that impact on their human rights. It also means increasing the ability of those with responsibility for fulfilling their rights to recognize and know how to respect these rights and make sure that they can be held to account do they fail to respect. So there's some underlying principles which are of fundamental importance when applying a human rights-based approach in practice. First of all, it is participation. Participation by survivors, participation by helpers. It's not a one-way dialogue, although right now I feel <laughs> that that's the technically easiest part of it. But our intention is, of course, participation in developing ways of working. Also, that we have the principle of accountability, that is, non-impunity. There's a lot of impunity going on today. And for people working in the field, it's very important that we know that those who are responsible will be held responsible for what they do. And that's also part of what we as healthcare workers may ask the world to do, namely to hold people to account. Principle of non-discrimination and equality, of course, major principles here. Non-discrimination, whether it's about gender, whether it's about religion, whether it's about ethnicity. Non-discrimination is a very important principle in all human rights-based work and, uh, of course, in human rights-based health work. And also empowerment. We have spoken about resources, the importance of a resource perspective, and legality in the form that we always stick to, to what is legal, what is in, also in line with human rights principles as they, they have been adopted and included also in the domestic uh, laws. So there's a lot of examples I'm sure both you and we could, could give you with respect to the importance of dealing with human rights approach in this work. I've mentioned a couple already, such as referring to international justice with respect to human rights violation. It's about emphasizing the rights that people have, including right to health, right to peace, right to dignity and integrity and also the importance of making people feel that this is not 
because of them. Human rights violations are initiated by people in power to de-empower the persons who are affected. So talk, having these kinds of conversations with people who have been exposed may give them some alternative way of thinking about, about what they have experienced. Especially, I think it's important to lift the feeling of guilt and shame and feeling sometimes that this is their fault. They, this is not their fault. People who are exposed to human rights violations of the severest kind that we are talking about are not guilty. Those who are doing, performing the human rights violations are the guilty ones. Next slide, please. So, as I mentioned, we have also based ourselves on the humanitarian charter and protection principles as these have been developed by the SPHERE project. And I just want to read you aloud what's here, that we want to bring in also the SPHERE project into the training, and the SPHERE project and its handbook are known for introducing considerations of quality and accountability to humanitarian response by using the humanitarian charter. And the main principles here, which are very much in line with the human rights principle, is the right to live to life with dignity, the right to receive humanitarian assistance, and the right to protection and security. I think the humanitarian charter here is a very good addition to the principles that we have presented in the manual because it goes into more details about several aspects of humanitarian assistance in situations of conflict. And I'm sure that Hamza now will add some, uh, some, uh, some arguments here as to what is the added value of looking at the humanitarian charter together with the human rights principles as we have defined them here. Hamza, will you add here a little bit, please, or? Thank you very much. I've been reading all them today. We've been reading them, so if you want to take them directly in Arabic, that's yeah. fine. Wonderful.
مثل ما قلنا أهم كثير على المعتقدين الأساسيين أول شيء إذا الناس بدهم الحق في الحياة في كرامة وبالتالي الحصول على المساعدة الإنسانية وثاني معتقد أم عليه ويجب علينا كم وكالات إنسانية أن نتخذ كافة الإجراءات الممكنة لتخفيف المعاناة الناتجة عن الكوارث أو النزاعات. شو معنات الحق في الحياة بكرامة جميع الأشخاص المتضررين مو بس أنا إذا قدمت لهم مساعدات إنسانية هذا الشيء كافي لألهم لا بس لازم يكون الحياة في كرامة ولو كان ضمن الأزمة نستخد كافة الخطوات لضمان هذا الحق وبالتالي هذا الحق يولد مباشرة الحق في الحصول على المساعدات الإنسانية المساعدات الإنسانية ما نقصد بس في المساعدات السلة الغذائية فهي أكبر من والحق في الحماية والأمان ممكن نتوسع بعدين بمحاضرة إضافية عن هذه الحق هذا هذا الشابتر الأول اللي حكى عن نصفي ورح نتجه لل للفاق الإنساني اللي تولد منه مبادئ الحماية مبادئ الحماية كل شخص هون موجود يجب أن يستخدم هذه المبادئ في حسب مطرحه شو هو عم يشتغل؟ حصلنا كثير مبدئين للحمايه، المبادئ العامه التي كل الاشخاص يدخلوا في هذه المبادئ يجب ان يضمنوا هذه المبادئ في عملهم مبادئ خاصه مثل الحمايه من العنف الجنسي، حمايه الاطفال، حمايه كبار السن، الحمايه من الالغام واللي الاشخاص خاصه يستخدموا هذه الخدمه. كان أربع المبادئ الرئيسية بشكل رئيسي ورح نعطي أمثلة عن كل مبدأ وبدي أطلب منكم تساعدوني بالقسم الشاد بإعطاء هذه الأمثلة. أول مبدأ حكى عنه أول من مبادئ الحماية تجنب الأنشطة التي تسبب مزيدا من الضرر للناس. Avoid exposing people to more harm. طلبت منكم تعطوني مثال عن تجنب الأنشطة التي تسبب مزيدا من الضرر للناس. هذا ممكن يساعدنا بالكتاب الشاط تجنب الأنشطة اللي تسبب مزيد من الضرر للناس أنا كعبد من مستوطنات بشرية وأنا مدير مخيم ففي عندي نساء سبريتد وومن أنا ما معقول أحطهم للسيدات المنفصلات في بيئة ليست تحميل فيجب أن أخصص لهم مكان لهم عشان يقدروا يعيشوا For another example, if the banana 
الحمامات في منطقة بعيدة ونائية وغير مخزمة بالأضوية فهذا الشيء ممكن يعرضهم أكثر للطاشن فيولنت عن تجربتي طبعا هذا أول نقطة ننتقل على المبدأ الثاني من مبادئ الحماية هو ضمان حصول الناس على المساعدات الإنسانية بدون تحيز نحن ما بنتحيز لا لعرق ولا لدين ولا لجنس ولا ميول جنسي في بعض الحالات التي شاهدناها من نساء المعنفات جنسيا انه ما عاد يتقدم لهم مساعدات انسانيه صار ينظر لهم بشكل وصمي انه هن معرضوا لاساءه انه هن مخطئات فيجب علينا ان نتدارك هذا وصلنا كثير بهذا الشيء جدا المبدا الثالث حمايه الناس من الاذى النفسي والبدني الناتج عن العنف والاساءه مثال عن ذلك انه اجبر الناس على على عمل شيء على غير ارادتهم كمثال عن ذلك في احد المنظمات السوريه كانت المساعدات الانسانيه مقبل مقدم مقابل الخدمات الجنسيه وهذا امر نحن نرفضه تماما هذا مثال على سبيل الذكر وليس الحصر لكن هناك مجموعه من تعرف الناس على المطالبه بحقوقهم والتماس الحلول والتعافي من اثار الانتهاكات كمان هذا الشيء اذا اي نساء تعرضت لسكشوال ابيوز يجب انه نحمل لها المسارات الصحيحه لان تشتكي على الشخص المعتضي ل... لانه المساعده تنهي يب ذا لاست كويستشن ايش بتعتقدوا انه هو من المهم انه نحن نحافظ على حقوق الانسان وهذه المعايير في استجابتنا الانسانيه ليش مهم قانون دولي الانسان ليش مهم حقوق الانسان ليش هذه المهم مبادئ الحمايه في كافه الاندمجه في كافه استجابات المجتمع امم امم ايش بروفايد بروتكشن يس او هاو ترايت and and you have been able to to reply to some of the questions they have raised to you also Yes, oh, yes fine good okay thank you very much um provided that um uh, i mean I've, I'm sure that uh, what you have been presenting now is very, is uh, is these basic principles also of the protection and and the humanitarian charter and I think that these are extremely important and uh, we hope that uh, what this manual can add is something in addition to those basic principles especially in the area of of mental health and human rights before I go on but thank you very much Hamza this Uh, again, I will come back to the questions about mental health in conflict situations. But before I do that, I want to underline something which I think is very important for all of us, namely the fact that today sexual and gender-based violence is fully acknowledged as a severe human rights violation. It used not to be so. For many years, violence in, in context of conflict was considered practically what the Americans called collateral damage, something which just happens. It's not part of the war. Now this is considered both a part of the war as a war crime, as I already mentioned, and as severe human rights violations. And this lifts, in a way, our conversation about these issues and, and stresses the focus on on human rights and human rights abuses but no matter what kind of names one put on the traumatic situations they may lead to severe mental health problems and during the sessions that we have to come we will of course describe more in detail how how traumatized persons will react and what they fear we will talk about um about trauma reminders etc cetera, etc cetera. you can already see that through the manual about things that will be coming but in conflicts we know that the mental consequences mental health consequences of conflict are serious in all wars that have been studied more in detail 
during the last hundred years from the First World War and on, there have been a number of studies to look into the severe human uh, costs of conflict, especially on health, physical health as well, as well as mental health. And knowing that today, in the present time war, it is the civilians who are very much being affected, we know that there will be a high number of persons, of ordinary citizens with severe mental health consequences and affected in their psychosocial well-being because of the war. So one of the very, very important aspects will be to define ways in which one can improve their health and their psychosocial well-being, also by giving them more strength and more for us to be able to deal with these things themselves also. Thank you. Next. We will now, and I will give the word to Elizabeth now, because she will present to us how the manual is constructed. We are aware that this first lecture today will focus much on the presentation of the manual itself, on the conditions on which this work is, is made, but we think that that is worthwhile since you will be studying this both together and, uh, and each uh, and one of you alone. So I will now pass on the word to Elizabeth to, to tell you about the construction of the manual. Thank you very much for, tonight, for now and we'll come back. Hello. Mm, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about uh, the construction of the manual. The manual is divided into three parts. It's one part that is, consists of 15 boxes with basic information, the main ideas and themes and content of, of what we will do in the actual training part. And then the, the, the main part of the manual is the training. This part has instructions to the trainer. It has group exercises, um, grounding techniques, role plays, and discussions. And uh, most, the most important part is that all these are, f are following the butterfly woman metaphor, metaphor so that all the, all the skills that you're learning is true the butterfly metaphor. And then for, for further reading, we have a theory part with resources and uh, more links. And uh, they've also gathered all the grounding exercises in one part. So have a quick look when you have the time. Next slide, please. So to make it easier, we have um, made laid out the training as a two-page uh, thing. So on the left side of the manual, it is um, everything that the trainer needs to know to conduct the, the training. Uh, and then we have the right side of the manual. There we have everything that the trainer will say loud to the audience. And then uh, we have tried to lay out um, the different exercises and role plays with very specific um, icons that you will recognize immediately when you're going through the manual. And the Butterfly Woman story is also very uh, specific in the way it's, it's uh, laid out. Next slide, please. Hmm. Thank you. So as I said, uh, the left side and the right side. So here you can see an example of how it's, it's uh, laid out. So these are uh, pages that will have to be uh, in the manual. It's, it's not a problem because you will see it immediately, but if you're reading it on the internet, you have to make sure that it's a two-page uh, show so that you can see the two pages that are connected together at the same time. So this is uh, when you're doing the training, but you can also do this um, when you pick 
independent parts or separate parts. You can uh, do different. You select whatever you need in the in the manual. Can we have the next slide, please? And and for the um, training itself, it's very important to have an active participation because we have different exercises and role plays and discussion and ground, grounding exercises, and um, it's more learning if you do the exercises, if you are, can actually um, feel the differences. For example, in the role play, we are very often doing the role as a helper. That is our natural instinct for most of us that are doing this work. But being a survivor makes it very different experience. Uh, and trying out your role as a survivor, you can suddenly see where where your role as a helper might uh, trespass borderlines that you only can see when you are sitting on the other side of the table or on, in the other chair. So the role plays are really important. Uh, ways of learning new skills and empathy, of course. And also we have grounding exercises and uh, this is a very important part of the training. And these exercises may be uh, difficult in the beginning and it's very difficult to teach a survivor how to do grounding exercises if you haven't felt uh, the exercises on your body, that you can actually feel that it, it makes a change. The difference bef bef before you start the grounding exercise and how it feels afterwards. And this is something that you cannot read, but you have to actually feel it on your body. So please, when we're doing grounding exercises in the future lessons, please take part of the, the actual exercise. Next, please. Next slide. And what we always would like to emphasize uh, is that you should make the manual useful. You implement the manual in the way that it works best in your uh, context. It, this is not a manual that you necessarily have to uh, read from page one to page 120. You can select the, the pages that you feel it's necessary for the work that you're doing. And also, always consider your cultural context. We have tried. This manual has been tested out in, in five different countries. And uh, we have tried to, to fit it in so that it will uh, be on a general term so that everyone can use it. But we encourage you to try to fit it into your cultural context. So use the whole training or just bits and pieces. And you can also use it in groups or individual studies. You can use it uh, while doing supervision or in discussion groups but always prepare f well. That includes uh, uh, translators and venue and where you sit down and talk with people. So that's uh, important issues. But these are also things that we talk about in the manual. Thank you, Elizabeth. I want to to uh, to uh, emphasize a couple of points because as you as you have heard now in the presentation of the manual this has been constructed as a training manual that is those who are doing training with others in their in their center or in their work can use the manual as a form of guideline for doing the training. 
So that's why we talk about trainers, we talk about what is being said aloud, etc. So you can read it and use it as a training device yourself as a trainer. That said, it is also something that, you, that conveys ways of working, principles in working, how we understand trauma, how we understand consequences of trauma, and how we understand important interventions following traumatic events. So it can also be read as a textbook or as a inspiration for you directly as a clinician or as a, as a consultative person. So you will probably during this process find that we will shift the perspectives a little bit during the way, but basically we hope to convey a way of working that you may find useful yourself, but you can also find it useful to apply this to train others who may be less skilled and have less formal background than you yourself have. So we hope that this will be clear during the way. I see that there can be some confusion, but um, hopefully this clarifies, um, this is more clarified during, during the whole process. And the, the manuscript, so to speak, the manual in itself will then, will, as Elizabeth has said, include both some principles, the direct training that you may do, and some additional resources. So that brings us to the end of the, um, the session today. We will open up for some questions now to you as trainers um, and listen if there are input directly or whether we should, um, or whether we can, it's better to do it as a chat. Of course, a little bit depending on what language you will chat on. But as a part of the certificate training, there are some, there are some questions that we want you to discuss uh, either between yourself or, or with colleagues also at a later point. And these are also in, the, um, in the, the PowerPoint that we have. These are some of the questions that you can discuss. But first of all, we can have some immediate feedback or questions or something that may, that you would like us to clarify right away. So, Hamzi, can we open up for that option? No, yes, of course. Uh, actually, now you can ask any question you want during the chat mm -hmm. or the microphone. Does the sound and the question on any issue you want to ask on the mic or the chat? هل لديكم أي استفسار أو اقتراحات؟ وسيمة سالي شيرين يحيى إذا كان لديكم أي استفسار You are most welcome Hi, can you hear me? Hi, I can hear very well Yeah, okay, great Yeah, I'm just uh, wondering if, uh, before uh, I'm sorry because I couldn't read all the emails. No, no. So I don't know exactly when the time of the all the I mean all the lectures will be online or it will be recorders or how it will be. Yeah, both. <laughs> because since this is the first time we do we do this version with seven times, we will be or some of us will be in, in the room present when the lectures are taking place. But we are recording them also. So the idea is that uh, next time around, or even for those who have participated this time, the, um, the lectures on, uh, will be recorded and available to you in addition. So we have the timetable now will be every Wednesday. Today was Thursday, but from, the, from this next week on, it will be every Wednesday at the same time uh, okay. for six, six consecutive Wednesdays. And then afterwards, this material will be available um, as recorded. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much.
هل لديكم اي استفسارات اخرى عن الشهاده الحضور المنهاج المستخدم طريقه التدريب يمكنكم الكتابه دائما او التحدث عبر المايك Are most of you sitting together, two or two, or are you sitting um, by yourself, many of you? Actually, Haya was asking about the certificate. Oh, yeah. Okay, fine. Can you, can you provide some information about it? Yeah, let me see. The chat box, special. Mm -hmm. Yes, alone, two together, fine. Um, well, when, when, when people have, have attended these courses and also replied to some of the questions that we have put out, we, we will develop, we have, we have a certificate that we have used earlier, uh, but we will describe the course and provide you with a, with a hard copy of a, um, of a certificate with, um, with our name and signatures and also describing how much or um, what you have actually covered through this session, th these sessions. Did that answer? Answer it? And it will be handed out towards the end. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, I have another question from Russia. She asked about if we can talk more about SGBB children mm -hmm. and if we can, how we can deal with survival. We cover that. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, it will be the it's the main topic all throughout the the, the manual and all throughout the, the sessions. So, so we will next time we will focus on the helper. We will focus on who is the helper and what are the helper's skills. Here we want all of you, including ourselves to look into what are we actually doing, what are our tools, and what are our strategies. And, and from there, we will move to, um, to gender-based violence itself and the survivor. So it will be, it will be the main, main part of this, will be understanding what gender-based violence does to a person, uh, especially sex, uh, severe sexual violence, and also how to deal with it from a helper side. Definitely. So, Rasha, that's. We hope that you we come back to this. And everybody has seen the questions that we would like you to discuss between yourself or or reflecting upon, because these will be. You will be asked to to comment on these also for a condition for the certificate. And Hamsi will explain more. Yes. الحقيقة نحن نحن دائما نحن 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 ممكن نحصل على الاثنين بكل تأكيد بس يجب علينا أن نلتزم في المحاضرات يجب علينا أن نقدم جميع الهمورك أو الاستثمان بالوقت المحضر دورتنا راح تكون كتير عملية فيها كتير اكسرسايز فيها كتير أمثلة راح تكون we have to share our experience together yes وقت ما بنقدر نطرح أمثلة أو صعوبات نحن عم نواجهها في عملنا ممكن نستفيد من الخبيرة نورا. Yeah. The fact that people have been present, have attended in the discussions, which are not so technically easy, but for us it will be important that we, we know that you have gone through some of the questions and discussions either with your colleagues or, or with yourself, if, you, if you're by yourself. 
and we will uh, provide you with um, the certificate in paper and, and uh, electronically. And, and the conversation with the, with the person, with the survivor of the gender-based violence, I think is, is one of the con first conversations that we're going to have now in, in this session. It, I think, just to, to make it very, very brief, I think the main, main principle we should have when we start is that, that they are owners of their own story. They are not to be in any way pressured or feel that they are under pressure or coercion to talk. It's not you must talk. It's, it's about uh, that they have experienced things that they might want to share or they might not want to share. So the control is in their hands. And our method and approach is that one can talk indirectly about the person's experience through using the metaphor. By, after some time, explaining what the metaphor, the butterfly woman experienced, it's a way of saying that this is something that happens after violence. This is something that many people experience and also that a sign that you are not crazy, even if you have very strong dreams or very severe memories and returning strong feelings. So ways of talking about this is what we will be working on in the weeks to come. And as I said in the beginning, the importance is that she feels that she is being respected not pushed, she has the control, she is the survivor, and, and you are the person who can invite for a conversation, not pushy, not by using power, but by allowing a space where she eventually may want to talk, or at least listen to your talking about the, the butterfly woman or what is frequently reactions to severe trauma. And then the last, point port, the last part of that will be enabling her strategies to deal with them herself. And we find perhaps that being very important. And as Elizabeth said, these exercises will be part of your exercises so that you feel it on, in your body what effects some of those grounding, breathing exercises may mean for the person. Mm. Any other questions or comments? Because we thought that now we have presented the background of the manual, the idea that the manual can be used as a training manual, but it can also be used as text to, to, to give inspiration and, and direction to your own work as a clinician or as a helper. And uh, it may hopefully give some, 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 not necessarily better understanding, but a little bit different understanding on dealing with trauma and the reactions of traumatic events. So we thought that we, by this, again want to thank you very much uh, for, your, for your courageous work and for your presence. And we hope that we will be able to um, provide you with some, some, um, some, good, some, some good moments. Thank you. Thank you, Nora. I will encourage you to all to have a successful training program about seven weeks. I strongly encourage you all to become actively engaged in this mm -hmm. course, sessions, and discussion about your experience, challenges, and activities. We have, I remind you, we have that one session every week comes with reflections and assessments. You have necessary to answer it during the week. Uh, if you have any technical issue, you can always contact me or Elizabeth. Uh, and we have 
our, our, our sessions are interactive, so please, thank you very much. Thank you very much.